What's up everybody? Uh, welcome back to my channel and welcome to part two of my carnivorous plant tour. Uh, we'll get to the plants in just a second. Just wanted to do a quick unboxing because these plants just arrived. Uh, this one's from Red Leaf Exotics and this one's from Carnivero. Um, I don't want to take too much time on doing this. I uh, have a little bit to show you. It's not as many plants as uh, part one. And if you haven't seen part one, go ahead and check out that video. Um, uh, but yeah, that's that's about it. Let's uh, go ahead and get started. We'll go ahead and open. Hmm, I don't know which one to pick. Let's uh, let's do red leaf exotics first. Put this down here, and we'll get into it. It's always exciting getting new plant mail, especially in this uh, quarantine times. Don't really get to leave house much. It's pretty early in the morning, so as usual, cool little cards. They're like collector cards, you know. Pretty fun. I have no idea how big this plant is. Oh, it's a baby! Oh, wait, I think there's two in here. Ooh! Ooh, look at that! Okay, so we got both plants. Um, can't really see them in the bag, but they look quite amazing. Here's the other one. Look at that. Beautiful. I will put the name in a second. Just make sure this is everything. Alright. So I'm put that down. Alright. Oops. Okay, so I believe this is. Nepenthes uh, grandifloria, I think that's how you say it. Alright, let's pull this out. There it is. Put that on camera. This thing looks awesome. I love the pictures on these. Little black dots, too. Pretty crazy. This will be uh, upstairs on the Nepenthes table um, so that's where these are all gonna go very cool and we'll check out number two this is a this is a big boy here of looking pictures. Beautiful specimen. It looks really cool. The colors are really red too. I don't know if the camera can get that. But yeah, that's the, the leaves. It's really cool guys. Let me see if I can find the name tags real quick. Okay, so I couldn't find the name. It's probably on the bottom of the box, but I think this one is Loei Bashiana Loei Vici Sibuensis Trusmariensis. It's a pretty long name, but this thing looks super cool. Like I said, like wish the colors could come out on this thing because it looks pretty aggressive. Just a very cool looking pitcher plant. The panthes. Got a little little bubble. Um, I don't know if this one's gonna come out, but it could still pop. Um, we'll have to see. But yes, very very cool. And then this one is Nepenthes uh, Grand Grandifloria. I think that's how you say it. I'm probably really butchering that name, so I apologize in advance. Um, but let's go ahead and put these to the side. Um, 
And we'll open up a uh, Carnivoro. Carnivoro, sorry. Okay. So here it is. Dun 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 dun. Let's grab the knife. <clears throat> So how's everyone doing? Has anyone got uh, new plants? Uh, doing anything with uh, their plants? Creating new structures? I don't know. I mean, we have a lot of time on our hands, so so many things to do. I mean, for me, I just can't stop buying these plants. And then it might be a surprise, but I might buy a snake. And if I do, I will show you guys. If you guys are into that, not, I don't know. Um, leave a comment down below if you'd like to see. All right, this is personal information. We'll go ahead and move that out of the way. And deep inside, we got Nepenthes uh, Edria Loei Vici Northiana. I think that's how you say that name. Like I said, I am quite garbage at this naming, but beautiful little plant. Let's move this out of the way. It's the only one. Okay. Look at that. Wow. The colors on this thing are cool too. I just love uh, low AI um, hybrids. It always brings out beautiful colors in the plants. And VGI, of course. Look at that little bubble. It's a nice size plant, beautiful leaves, very green. So. We. The name tag for this. Ugh. One more time, just in case you haven't seen that. I believe this plant is still available on uh, Carnivero's website, so I'll leave a link down below if you guys are interested. And I'll leave a link for Red Leaf Exotics as well if you guys are into purchasing the Penthes or. Uh, they have other plants as well. And we'll go ahead and get these potted up. Um, I'm not going to do a comp jump cut. I mean, I'll do a jump cut, but I'm not going to do it like how I did last time. Because it was garbage. Um, so we'll just do like a... Alright, so as you can see, there's a lot more plants on the table now. Um... These are the main three plants, uh, or the two plants that we just ordered in. And while I was also potting these up, another plant uh, came in. So I'll show you this also. So this is part of the new collection. So Nepenthes VCI Big Mama Pink Candy Cane from Carnivoro. If it focuses, it never wants to focus, I swear. All right, so I have a lot of plants that I want to show you guys now um, that I bring down um, that were on my uh, window seal uh, in the kitchen but instead of showing you that because uh, there's dishes in there I don't want to show you guys that um, I just bring them down and bring them on the table so let me take you guys off the tripod okay so here are all the Nepenthes that were on the window seal uh, downstairs um, for the most part, uh, there are uh, ventricosa crosses and then uh, ventricosa itself. Uh, so we'll start from right here. This is my Dressora capensis narrow leaf from uh, California Carnivores. Uh, as you can see, it's suffering. Um, it does much better outside. I did bring it in to try to uh, control the uh, fruit flies that I have, um, especially since it's spring now. Uh, for the most part, it did really well, uh, and then most of the leaves died. Um, probably put it back outside, 
uh, after this because it's looking a little hurt. I did trim off all the dead leaves because I kind of don't like looking at them. They just kind of look gross. And then we'll move over. This is my Nepenthes. Uh, I believe this is Ventricosa, but I won't know until it gets bigger. It could be uh, a late um, Ventrata, but I'm pretty sure it's a Ventricosa. Uh, this is from the Home Depot place and I repotted it into a little ceramic pot and I uh, got it really small actually so it's, it's put some leaf jumps and all so looks pretty good Let's see if I can narrow this down yeah it looks pretty good We've got some uh, good pitcher jumps that pitcher here I fertilized it so that's probably why it's doing pretty well um I had live sphagnum moss on the top of this and then it just went black so if that's what you're looking at that that's what that is don't mind it uh it just doesn't have enough humidity down here um for that so we'll skip over and this is my nepenthes spectabilis Spic Spic yeah i think that's how you say it um we'll just go with that <clears throat> sorry for butchering the name again that's not how you say it but i think that's how you say it i lost the name tag for it um, can't remember where I put it, but I've had this for about two and a half years. Um, also acquired this one from California Carnivores. Um, this is sitting in one of the humidity chambers that I built, and this thing has exploded with live moss all over the place. Uh, this one's a little bit more finicky. I'm guessing it probably doesn't like the low humidity down here. Um, uh, downstairs it probably sits around 50%. Um, so I'll probably have to take this one upstairs and probably take it out of this humidity chamber and put a, one of the ventricosas in here or something else that can withstand the downstairs uh, temperatures. Um, yeah, this one also I put live moss. As you can see, some of it has grown back on the sides here, but for the most part it also browned out and kind of shriveled and turned black and died. Um, during the winter it looks all green, but it's not winter anymore so the sun's just kind of beating down on it it kind of beats it up maybe the leaves also i've never grown this one under artificial light so it'll probably look way better uh, if i do that but we'll have to see so then we will move this one over and if you guys want to like learn um or not learn but like um watch the video on like how i did this i'll, I'll put the link in the description or like one of those little pop-up thingies like right here so if you guys are interested uh, okay now we'll look at my one of my favorite nepenthes of all time this is uh, ventricosa cross dubia as you can see so i don't mind the mess uh it has a long very long um vine on it thought about taking cuttings but kind of will see if it flowers or not um i had an upper pitcher which was like maybe just a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller than my hand um it's actually in the first video i ever um recorded uh, for youtube so uh, you could actually see it there uh, but since then it hasn't gave me any other upper pitchers it just kind of started vining out and then it gave me a basil so that's what this is here this is actually my first time ever seeing a lower pitcher on it and it looks really cool i love the the red on it and then uh, focuses you can see all the like sugar on the top of the lid i didn't know that it can do that so that's really cool that it did that and this one catches all types of things i don't know if you guys can see that but yeah sorry my nails are dirty i work on cars also <laughs> um but yeah this one uh is getting a new picture here and the basil is getting really big really fast it started off really small and then it just started leaf jumping like crazy you can see this is uh, one of the first leaves. I didn't um, do a uh, pitcher. And then same thing, like I said, I, I literally put like all live sphagnum moss on the top of mine. One's downstairs and it just, the sphagnum was not having it. And it just browned out and looked gross, but just kind of kept it there because it, it does have the potential to grow back. Um, not gonna lie, when I first got this plant, I started freaking out because if you look like right there, Sorry about that, the camera kind of died, but like I was saying, um, 
it looks like it kind of has like a stem rot kind of thing but i guess with this uh, type of plant it gets really black and then it finally browns out you don't know how long um i was like freaking out about this but it, it's nothing to worry about if you have one just a fyi i guess um but yeah this is in the Penthes Venture Costa Cross Dubia. And it's it's a cool little plant. Well, it's not little anymore, it's pretty big actually. Alright, so let's move over. Right, sorry, it's a the beam light there, so I get some backlight here. And then let's look at this one. This is Nepenthes Ventricosa. This is one of my bigger plants. I had to put it in a big pot because it was uh, overgrowing on the other one. I just recently put this one in uh, to do a transplant. And then I had the unfortunate, like the real reason I had to like repot it is I had a full colony of ants move into the uh, soil. So uh, one day while I was watering it, I noticed that a couple ants started flying out. So I, was, I looked. They moved the soil over and it just completely flooded the whole plant. And um, I had to do an immediate um, repot because uh, from the looks of it, the ants were like unsettled the roots. I never even seen that many ants in my life. So uh, the plant might have gotten hurt a little bit. Um, hopefully not. Oh, I've got a little you can see the leaves kind of wilted a little bit, but I think it'll bounce back. It's unfortunate that that happened because this is um, one of my oldest, if not my oldest plant that I've had. Because um, it's, you know, it's the first beginner plant, I guess, to get you in. I've had these, I had multiple versions, but I was younger, so I didn't really understand it too much. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it's still developing pictures like a champ. No issues there. It has three on the way and a bunch of new tendrils. And this one seems to love it downstairs. I never even had a thought of putting on the Nepenthes table. It probably thrived really well, but for the most part, it does really well here. And it really controls like some of the flies that I get and stuff. I had to cut off all the old pictures because they were just engulfed in ants. It was, it was pretty crazy. I wish I would have recorded it, but that's what happened there. And um, it's pretty unfortunate, but yeah, you know this is still one of my uh, my all-time favorites. You know, you, you can never go wrong. There's so many good crosses with this uh, species as well, or species. What do you call this one? Not species. Uh, I can't. I can't think of the name. It's, yeah. Well, let's move on from that. Let's go to my. And this one over you guys this is the one i did the unboxing of just take a little in-depth look now i'm not gonna lie this is actually a couple days um since i did the first part or the jump cut uh so these plants have had time to settle in um so as you can see i um, put some moss here and this this moss will do fine uh in the room on the nepenthes table with the high humidity humidity sits around 70 percent there so there's no problem and it won't get burned from the lights um, so here's the new picture uh, it's doing really well it needs to probably needs about a month or two to really settle in and start giving me growth again but you know honestly i've already seen that this guy's little, little guy here is moving so it'll be kind of cool to see i put this in a humidity chamber as well this is actually uh, the old Ventricosa, the big one right there, uh, humidity chamber. Um, this is the pot that I was also in, uh, but I, uh, I just put this plant in there because it was an empty pot and it fits perfectly. Um, luckily the ants didn't get to this part, so I, I didn't even have to change this too much and this can continue to grow um, live moss. But yeah, uh, this one's probably one of my top favorites now too. You know, um, has a really long name. Um, there's this Loei Bashiana, uh, Loei Vichii Sibuensis Cross uh, Trusmariensis. Yeah. So, 
very long name and a very cool looking picture. I can't wait till it gets bigger to see what this becomes. Got a little damage during shipping, but you know, that happens. And the fact that, you know, you still get to see the picture is pretty cool. Um, when I first got the plant, it did have a bunch of other leaves, but I just chopped them off because they were practically dead. So if that's what you're looking at and it looks different, that's why. And then this one. Uh, this is Nepenthes, um, I can't really pronounce that name. Um, I'm not gonna even try actually. I'm just gonna look like a, a peanut trying to say a, a name that's probably mispronounced. Uh, across Loia, across uh, Vichia, across North Yana. This is also a carnivoro um, hybrid, in-house hybrid that he made. And this one looks really cool. I had to get the larger version because the pictures, I mean, honestly, the camera probably won't even do it justice, but the lip on this thing is so cool. So if you guys are also interested in this one, he still does have them available on his site. So if you guys are interested, I'll leave the link down below. But a very cool cross if you're interested. Can't wait to see what it looks like when it gets way bigger. All right, moving along. This is my Mexican butterwort. We've had this one. Uh, this is probably, uh, this is actually my wife's plant. Um, probably needs a uh, repot, to be honest. Uh, it's, it, we got it when it was like, like really, really small, and this thing has just exploded. It flowers a lot. Um, it's probably just coming out of dormancy. I mean, these don't really go into dormancy, but it turns into like a, kind of like a succulent over the winter. And then it, once the spring comes back around, it becomes carnivorous again, you know, by like having the stickiness. And you can see that it's catching um, little gnats and fruit flies right now. Um, when it flowers, it looks really cool. It has like a very bright purple flower. And then it even produced a red flower for me once. Um, but yeah, it probably definitely needs a repot. Uh, so I'll have to do that really soon. So that's pretty much it for the indoor Nepenthes. Um, that are on my windowsill. Now we just have to go outside to see the outside ones. It's only a couple, it's not too many. So we'll go ahead and do so that. Here we are uh, outside of my house. These plants usually sit on the windowsill that I have out here, but <clears throat> the lighting is pretty terrible. So I went ahead and um, completely changed it and just put it on here on this um, little wood thing, doesn't matter. Anyways, so here's my Venus flytrap. It's uh, fully awoken for the spring slash summer. Um, as you can see, the hairs are kind of purplish. Really cool looking. Acquired this one from California Carnivores. Has two um, flower stalks, but as you can see, the aphids um, started attacking it. I've been treating it, but they just keep coming back. I'm not sure why. Um, but hopefully we can get that under control pretty soon um yeah so this plant does pretty well i've had it for about two years it's probably time for about a new transplant um but it's doing really healthy uh, as you can see this is like an old winter pitcher here or a pitcher a trap here um and it doesn't have the purple lids like the new ones do so it's pretty cool to see that these have purple uh, hairs really unique looking <clears throat> it has uh, two shoots right now, so probably can divide those uh, next winter or this upcoming winter um, once everything slows down in growth. But for now, we'll just keep it like this. Traps are fully functional. As you can see, they catch a lot of prey out here. This is my Saracenia. Sorry for the stuff in the back. It's my truck. Um, but I. Uh, I actually can't remember the name of this one. Um, I lost the tag a little bit ago. Um, but it has exploded in growth since I've got it. The pictures are quite massive. If you can see, I mean, for how tall they are, that's what I mean. It's all the way down here. Um, this actually came with a couple hitchhikers also. Um, I don't actually know the name of this one, but when I first got the plant, uh, didn't have this and then over time it started growing and it's grown really large 
all the little white things are actually like the little seeds from um oh, really sticky um from seeds from like the plant in the air out here so that's what that is um here's another one also don't know the name of this one more of a nepenthes collector to be honest but yeah that's this is my Circinia pot I usually keep this completely submerged in water so like around here to up here um, because this is uh, like the Venus flytrap they like to be completely submerged or for the most part submerged in water so that's what I try to do for that one and then the last one that I have outside is actually my Home Depot special um, I just put the name tag because I think it is this one. It's a Drysora Compensis. Uh, not Alba though. So it's my other one that actually died a little bit ago. It was also attacked by aphids. Uh, this one I had when it was like, like absolutely nothing. So it just completely exploded in growth. I could actually probably put this in a bigger pot now because it's so big. Um, when I actually bought this one, the lady was like, "Why are you buying this plant? It's completely dead." But I was like, "I, th I think I can, I think I can bring it back." And since then, it's just like completely, you know, just grown to tremendous sizes. But yeah, uh, other than that, it's just you know, my three outside plants for the most part. Uh, I plan to get more Venus fly traps because I really love those plants. It's my first uh, carnivorous plant. Not this one, but it was my first carnivorous plant. Um, it's my first Saracenia for sure, though. I think that's how you say the name. If I'm butchering it, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know there's a lot of Saracenia fans out there. Yet again, probably saying it wrong. But yeah, that's the plant. And there's my view. It's a pretty nice day. Um. Yeah, so now I will take you guys inside to show you the tank plants. This is my intermediate chamber. Uh, this is where I usually put all my um, really small plants. So that's the Pentes Raja there. And uh, obviously this is not a small plant, but it, it grows the best in here. So I just kind of kept it in here. Um, this is, which one is this? This is... I believe Ampularia, yeah, Ampularia cross, or what? No, Oikiloides cross Ampulari, Ampularia. No, there we go. Boom. Ampularia cross Oikiloides. Or Astro Oikiloides. Yeah, uh, yeah, garbage with that name also. So if I said it wrong, just know that I'm trash. Uh, and then this one is Nepenthes dubia. Pretty small. I got this one from Native Exotics. This is also from Native Exotics. But as you can see, this is what the tank looks like from the outside. So this is all sphagnum moss here. And then has, um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's like a mesh layer in there so that's the drainage layer so the plants are actually just like sitting like right here uh so they don't you know they're not constantly sitting in water and i only water this about every two days um and then the led provides the heat and light for it uh this one will probably have to be moved out eventually i don't know if i'll put this on my nepenthes table or not i, I haven't tried uh but it's it just pictures like crazy in here Ring out of all of them. This is probably one of my cooler, oh, well, uh, cooler finch. Really tub, tubby uh, pitchers. And it has the mouth like uh, Oikoloides. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but yeah. Pretty cool. Hope to see my Raja get like some leaf jumps and everything. I actually just put it in here today. It was on the Nepenthes table and I took out the. Uh, Raja cross VGI cross low EI. Um, so we'll have to see. But that is pretty much it. Okay, so here we are at the end of the video. I know it's been a long one. I tried not to make it that long, but it's a lot of things to show you. Uh, I do appreciate guys for watching and subscribing. Um, I'll definitely try to push out more content. 
um, as time progresses and as I get more plants. I'll probably make videos about like the sphagnum mosses that I use and pretty much any other information that you guys would like to know just leave a comment down below and I'll try to respond as best as I can. Um, still have to do like a build videos if you guys are interested. But yeah, that's pretty much it for now. I uh, really appreciate you guys for watching and have a great rest of your day.